Today I'm going to show you everything that you need to know about 3x oscillator. This is a native FL Studio plugin that's been around for a very long time. Let's get straight into it. What's up my producer friends, it's David with another monsterproductions.com. So 3x oscillator should look something like this when you first open it up and obviously it is named after the fact that it has these three oscillators right here which are very easily labeled and it's actually a fairly simple uh, synth. It, it This is just sort of the, the actual synth part of it, and then it's designed to work with the sampler in FL Studio. And I'm sure that most of you are fairly familiar with the sampler because anytime you load any sort of sample into FL Studio, it's going to pop up and it's basically going to have this tab this tab and this tab. So in this particular tutorial, I'm not going to spend too much time going through all of the options of the sampler. Uh, I'll probably do a separate video on that at some point, but for the most part, I'm gonna be focused on this front section here. And then we are gonna kind of go into the sampler just a little bit and touch on some of the, mo the more common things that you'll find inside Sense. Now, one thing that is really interesting to me about the 3x oscillator is that first of all it's almost 20 years old as you can see down here it was, it's been around since the year 2000 and it was designed after some of these 90s synths which had an alias sound which basically they're designed to purposely alias which if you're not familiar with what aliasing is that's again another a topic for another video but i'll do my best to sort of explain what it is um, because i think it, it's important to kind of understand what's happening in this so basically in digital audio we have different sample rates and this is controlling how much data can be stored in the file essentially so if i were to go into my options up here and let's go to like audio settings and right here you can change the sample rate you can see what it's on right now i have it on 44,100 hertz um, or 44.1 k hertz you could also go to 48 that's another standard that's sort of the standard for like tv film movies that sort of thing 44.1 is the standard for cds and um is still widely used in a lot of audio. So our sample rate is measured in Hertz, which we can see on any frequency spectrum. I'm using span. This is a free spectrum analyzer and the human ear can generally hear from around 20 Hertz up to 20,000 Hertz. The older you get, the less you can hear. So I can actually not hear all the way up to 20,000 Hertz, but this is sort of the area that we want to be focused on. Uh, when it comes to audio and analyzing our tracks and understanding this stuff. So if you're familiar with the spectrum analyzer, this should make sense to you. But basically uh, we have this thing called the Nyquist theorem, which what this means is that assuming that our in 48,000 Hertz, half of that, the audio could not go past that. So half of 48,000 would be 24,000. Uh, so basically when I got up to 24 K Hertz, the audio, instead of going on past that point would basically have to start coming back down into the uh, spectrum that you actually can hear. And so this is what aliasing is. And you can see this in our spectrum analyzer. So if I were to play a sawtooth on the 3X oscillator right now, which is a very harmonically rich tone, uh, you will actually be able to see on the spectrum analyzer, the harmonics coming back down. The interesting thing about this plugin is that when you render the audio in this plugin, it gets rid of some of the aliasing, not all of it, but some of it. So in preview mode, we have quite a bit more aliasing going on with some of these more harmonically rich sounds that we're going for, which is uh, potentially gonna change the sound quite a bit when you're previewing the track to when you actually export it. So just keep this in mind when if you're using this synth. Now, the reason why aliasing is often considered bad is because uh, when it comes to harmonics, harmonics are very mathematical in nature. So for example, our standard tuning for A would be 440 hertz and an A an octave up from that would be 880 hertz and an octave up for that you would double the frequency and so on and so forth. Now all the other notes within that scale fit in fit very mathematically into that formula. So with aliasing we're actually getting sounds coming back down in an unmathematical order. So you're gonna have a lot of extra harmonics that don't necessarily make sense with that particular key or that sound. Uh, so this may be desired for, I guess, kind of a grittier, more electronic type sound, uh, but generally it's considered to be bad. All right, so let's move on to our actual parameters of the synth here. So first of all, we have uh, the option to click this button here, which is pretty standard. And as I mentioned before, uh, we have integration with the sampler here. So we have all the different options of the sampler, as well as going back to our 3X oscillator here. Uh, we also have a little on off switch, which mutes the synth if we want, panning, 
volume, pitch. This is all very standard stuff to FL Studio. We also have a button up here which allows us to scroll through presets and I actually don't have any presets in this synth because I don't really use it. So it just basically goes to default every time I click it. We can also go down here and go to presets here and potentially save presets. Again, this is all standard to all FL Studio plugins. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just move the volume down just so I don't blast out your guys' ears. And let's move down to our oscillators. So as I mentioned before, and as you would assume based on the name, this plugin has three separate oscillators here. And by default, this is what the plugin should look like and sound like. Now we have the option to switch between various wave shapes here in our oscillator. And if you're not really familiar with what these wave shapes are or what wave shapes are in general, and you're just sort of brand new to synthesis in general, I would recommend checking out my introduction to synthesis and sound design video, which I have. Uh, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to check that out. But basically that's going to give you sort of an overview of everything that you need to know in order to kind of get started with sound design. It's going to sort of give you the fundamentals. We'll be going over the different wave shapes and different types of synthesis and that sort of thing. Anyway, we have our basic wave shapes here, which we can all choose from. We also have this right here, which is just white noise. Uh, so I think a lot of people actually still use 3X oscillator to generate white noise. It's a pretty easy and straightforward way to do it. Uh, we would just have to mute, get rid of these down here, and then we just have oscillator one playing and then we have some white noise. Now we also have this tab right here, which will allow us to load up a custom wave shape. And basically when this is highlighted, if we go into this tab here, whatever wave shape is actually showing here, I don't have anything loaded up right now, so it's not playing anything, but that is what would be playing. So we could potentially load something in there and have a custom waveform if we wanted to go that route as well. And lastly, we have this button here, which is our invert phase option. So moving on, we also have this phase offset. And this is basically, it just, it has to do with the position of the wave shape. So for example, if I were to bring it all the way up here, uh, I would assume this would be the very tippy top of this wave shape. And then down here would be the very bottom. So moving on to detune, we have the ability to detune the sound. which kind of gives it uh, this effect of having more voices, not quite in the same way as a lot of synths where we actually have the option to move multiple voices up and then detune it and create like a super saw. Uh, it's actually a lot harder to create something like a super saw in this sound. Uh, we'd actually have to go into this tab here and mess with our probably delay. Now moving on to our course button here, this just affects the pitch of the plugin in semitones. So if I go all the way down, I've just brought it down two octaves it says negative 24 semitones, as you can see up here. And as I bring it back up, we can go up another two octaves, which is plus 24 semitones, or we can just leave it there. And we can go anywhere in between on any one of these oscillators. So that's what that does. Our fine button controls pitch in sense, and it can go up 100 cents or down 100 cents, which is the same as one semitone or one half step if you're on a keyboard. And then lastly, we have this little button here, which is just a panning option. So we can pan things uh, in stereo right or left. And I kind of touched on this already, but this button here is essentially just a volume knob for these particular oscillators here. So we can kind of add them in. And I'm gonna turn this down so you can kind of hear it better. Now, one thing that is sort of great for a 3X oscillator is it is a really easy plugin to just sort of load up and we could create a sub bass very easily just by getting rid of these. Uh, we just have our oscillator one playing right now, drop this down and then we can get some sub bass going on there. We could also do like a triangle wave. Maybe add a little bit more harmonics in there. Now, moving on down to our lower section here, we have this little button here, and this button enables amplitude modulation for oscillator three. So that means that oscillator three will be modulating oscillator one and two, depending on you know how, what we have going on here. Uh, so this can be kind of an interesting effect. And then finally, we have this 
random phase option here, which when it's all the way far left, our random phase is at 0% far right is going to be 100 percent and this has to do with the stereo phase of it uh, basically what this is doing is it's creating a different phase option for the stereo field this can kind of create like a clicking sound sometimes and if you want to get rid of that clicking you could just go into your settings here and basically enable the envelope and then kind of mess with the attack Obviously, let's get rid of this decay. Anyway, that's how you could potentially experiment with the ADSR there and get rid of some of that clicking. All right, so this tutorial has already gone on uh, quite a bit longer than I expected it to. I spent a while talking about aliasing, so uh, I just want to briefly just go over one last section of this plugin, which I think is important to understand, and that is this section right here. This is our other sort of standard section that you're going to find in most sense. Of course, this is the same as it would be in our sampler in FL Studio, as I've mentioned. So right here we have our envelope. This controls the attack hold, decay, sustain, release. We also have a delay option here. Uh, and you can see as I sort of move stuff, you can see on the graph here exactly what's happening. And our LFO section is again, another standard thing. We can just kind of click on this and bring it up. It changes the amount here. And the last thing I want to briefly touch on is our filter section here. Again, another very standard feature of synths. Uh, we have the option to choose between various filter types down here. And then we can use our mod X and mod Y to change uh, how much is being filtered out. And then I think the mod Y controls the resonance, at least for this particular filter type. So, so we're filtering out those higher frequencies there and then adding some resonance there. Uh, so again, all standard stuff. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you liked it, please go ahead, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That's gonna let you know anytime I release videos in the future, and I'll see you in the next video.